Uh, let's bring in Dean Chang from the Heritage Foundation. He's written extensively on China and their military during his graduate work at MIT. He also spends a lot of time researching Asia in general. Great to have you, as always. Every word a U.S. president said is parsed so closely and watched by foreign leaders. He's on this trip, and we heard what he said on Air Force One to reporters about believing Vladimir Putin really in the face of this overwhelming evidence from the U.S. intelligence committee and community. What does that translate to for the leaders he's meeting with? Well, I think that, as you said, president's statements are carefully parsed. When we look at, for example, what he said in China about, I don't blame the Chinese. If you just cut it right there, it sounds, oh, great. But then he goes on to say that the Chinese are still engaged in theft of intellectual property. In his speech at APEC, he said the same sort of thing. I think when we look at what he said to Vladimir Putin, or more accurately, what he said about Vladimir Putin on the plane, what he was saying is, okay, he had said this, I'm not going to push him on this, I would be difficult for president to president to start saying, you know, I think you're lying. I think if he had said something like that, we would have an enormous diplomatic yeah. brouhaha that would be fairly catastrophic. All right. if, fair point, especially considering they didn't have a meeting. That was one of the things that everybody was bringing up, is whether or not they would actually have a formal meeting. This evidently was sort of said at a, on the side as they were pulled away. This from John McCain, as President Trump is now in Vietnam. John McCain knows a thing or two about Vietnam, was a guest of the Hoi Noi Hilton for a little while. Uh, at POTUS in Da Nang, and no mention of human rights, sad. Typically, it has been the job of U.S. presidents when they are abroad, especially in countries that don't share our values, to be a strong advocate for American values, whether it be free speech or human rights. We haven't heard a lot of that from President Trump, either on this trip or his one to the Middle East. Thoughts? I think that this is a shortcoming. I think it would help for the president of the United States to make very clear where we stand on fundamental principles, especially on, you know, this is Veterans Day, as the vice president said, what it is that Americans have fought and died for. Um, again, that being said, there is always the difficulty of to what extent do you want to start bringing up these issues with countries where you also have other issues at stake. Well. Finding that balance is what presidents are paid for, but one would like to hear the president of the United States be a little more forthright on the issue of human rights. Well, and, and also to that point of what's it going to change? Sometimes if you live, the Vietnamese may say, okay, that's great, thank you very much, go fly a kite. Um, last question for you. Overarching this entire trip has been North Korea and the threat of North Korea, but we haven't heard much from them. They said that the president was begging for war, but none of these really bellicose statements, no nuke tests, no missile tests. Is perhaps the president's rhetoric working a little bit uh, when it comes to containing the North Korean threat? It would be great if it is. My suspicion, however, is more that both Moscow, Beijing and Moscow put this uh, really pressure onto North Korea saying, don't do anything in the middle of this trip, especially with all of these summits, all of these meetings. I think the real no. big question is going to be, as the president flies home from Asia, mm -hmm. is North Korea now going to say, well, I held off for the last 12 days and now all bets are off. Well, noteworthy, though, to follow your logic out that Russia and China have that kind of control over North Korea. Uh, that, that's an important point. We'll get to that in our next interview. Also noteworthy, there's three uh, U.S. aircraft carrier battle groups uh, near North Korea, something probably not lost on anybody. Dean, always good to see you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Great being with you. Liz, what's coming up?